like we do every single episode. <laughs> Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, this might be one of the last times we need to talk about them because it's turning into a pretty chalk matchup for them week in, week out. Pretty predictable game scripts. The Dallas Cowboys are now the new Atlanta Falcons. They're going to go down early and uh, Dak is going to sling it. They're second in pace of play. Dallas defense literally can't stop anybody. The Cleveland Browns had 7.7 yards per rush attempt as a team. That's Jeez. including Baker. That's including Dontrell Hilliard. And that's with Nick Chubb being out of the lineup at one point before halftime. They were at like 9.5 yards per attempt as a team. So this Cowboys defense cannot stop anybody. They have no linebacker help. Their best safety is a, or their best defensive back is a rookie. Teams are going to be able to put up points. People are going to blame Dak on this one. I'm already seeing the mainstream you know, sports talk guys trying to take shots at Dak Prescott. He is not the reason for these issues at all whatsoever. He's the only reason they've been able to stay in games. Right now he's on pace to throw for over 6,000 passing yards <laughs> and has so far been able to support a lot of weapons oh in that gosh. offense. In this game, Dak threw the ball 58 times, almost 60 pass attempts. He's on pace for like 800. Yeah, he's been throwing a ton. Uh, had 57 attempts in week three against Seattle and then had 58 here. So hitting 60 in back-to-back -back games almost. Had himself a day. Um, was a fantastic fantasy option as he's been all season, as we predicted uh, in kind of the mock draft era before the season started. But Dak on the day completed 41 uh, of those 57 passes for 502 yards and then had four touchdowns. Also had a, a couple rushing attempts uh, to give you another you know little baseline there. But Dak is absolutely just airing the ball out because he has to. And this team is running a lot of plays. Zeke is doing Zeke things. Let's talk about some of the wide receivers here. Alex, I'll go ahead and let you take a victory lap on CD Lamb. You were all on him before the season. Uh, it's got to feel good going off in this game with two touchdowns. Yeah, man. I mean, first of all, this Cowboys team is giving up 36 and a half points per game. Like this is a quarter into the season. This isn't just like one bad game where they gave up 40 points. They're consistently giving up a ridiculous amount of points. And we said it all off season long. It's like the perfect storm of a terrible defense. That's actually had a couple injuries as well to make them even worse paired with one of the most, if not the most, high-flying offenses in the NFL, weapons all around. Dak Prescott, even at running back, Zeke, Tony Pollard was making plays in this game. I know Jarwin went down, but Dalton Schultz has been great. And then the receivers, arguably the best receiving core in the league. But back to CeeDee Lamb. You know, this is exciting to see. And I was in a lot of trade talks with him over the past couple of weeks just because he's been such a hot commodity. And I haven't wanted to trade him, but now, I mean, it's it, it's one of those things where is this something that's going to be sustained for the whole season or is this potentially a sell high window? Let's talk about his game here. He had seven targets, caught five of them for 79 yards. So that's a, almost a 16 yards per reception there and then added those two touchdowns as well. And to your point, you know, is this a sell high window on CD Lamb? I don't think it is. I think this is something that is sustainable. I think you keep holding him and you just keep plugging him in. What we've seen is Gallup really be the guy who's more boom bust with CD lamb is more of a safe, stable option. You know, we like slot receivers. We always like slot receivers for fantasy. And one of the rules, one of the, the you know, little hacks, so to speak is on game day. If you need a spot start, just find a slot receiver on an offense that might score. We see guys like Cole Beasley come out and even on their worst days are decent enough for fantasy. If you need eight to 10 points, CD lamb is that. And then, has ex uh, you know just the pedigree, the explosiveness, the profile. Here's, he has everything. Like I, I think we've seen enough now to say. Here's what C. I'll D. say. C. D. Lamb is great, and he's gonna be great. Yeah, here's what I'll say. I think C. D. Lamb is like if he's your flex right now, you probably have one of the best flexes in your league because I think you can lock him in as your wide receiver two or flex. He's gonna have an incredibly high floor. We saw it in this one, huge game with the two touchdowns. My one concern about Lamb, I love him as that high floor play. He's on the field. He's getting the snaps. He's getting the targets. This offense is insane, but Steph, surely, and maybe I'll be wrong on this, but surely the volume for the Cowboys offense is going to come down, even if it's 10%, right? Like Dak's not throwing for 6,500 yards. He's not going to have 800 attempts. He could, but it's not likely. So naturally, that's going to lead to slightly less volume for C.D. Lamb. And right now, He's been fantastic, but he's only seeing, I mean, he's seeing seven targets a game, which is great, but a lot of these are underneath passes. He did have the big one this week, but a lot of these are, a lot of these are shorter 
um, receptions. He's only average. I mean, right now he's averaging 14.7 yards per reception, but that was brought up by the huge game this week. So I think CD lamb is a very good play, but right now his value might be higher than it's going to be all season. And Steph, I just want to throw it back over to you, like CD lamb or Robert Woods for the rest of the year. I'd go Robert Woods. And, and the reason is just exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like CD Lamb or Kenny Galladay for the rest of the year. Oh, Kenny Galladay easily. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Peep, I'm telling you, people are so fired up about CD Lamb right now. You might be able to trade him one for one for one of these guys, or package him with somebody else to make a huge upgrade at a position. So, I think CD Lamb's a fine play, but his value right now is sky high, and I wouldn't mind cashing in uh, for an, a full season upgrade at the wide wide receiver position if you have the chance. Um, because look, you know, the two touchdowns in this game were great, but in the red zone, they're going to try to run it in with Zeke. They're going to run it in with Dak. And then if they're going to pass the ball, you got Amari Cooper ahead of him in the pecking order. Dalton Schultz at the tight end spot has been very involved in the red zone this year. And arguably Michael Gallup, even though he's not as involved between the twenties, he's a red zone threat as well. So CD lamb, I don't expect to be putting up any more two touchdown games this year. Maybe he'll pop for another one. But the touchdowns aren't going to come every week. And without a couple of those big plays, this is just another very consistent, solid game for CD. I'm, I'm surprised that you have this take and, you, and you're willing to flip them. I know like the receivers that you mentioned are guys that we have as, you know, high end wide receiver twos, maybe wide receiver ones. Um, but did you CD is just he's going to dominate all season and the schedule. We've talked about the Cowboys schedule. It's so easy. It's so soft and there's it's everything you want the perfect storm that's the i'm in on cd lamb and if you can't trade him for one of these ridiculous names keep him locked in i mean this isn't necessarily you know a sell high like it would be on some other guys that pop off but this this is a good opportunity to send out some feelers for some of these locked in season long values that might have disappointed in the last week or two and ride with cd lamb for example like i would take cd lamb over a guy like DJ Moore. Oh yeah. Um, so, so that's kind of where you're drawing the line. Um, I'd take him over a guy like Jarvis Landry, obviously. Um, so, so look, there's, you know, he's definitely had his value skyrocket since the season has started, but send some feelers out there for some of these locked in wide receiver ones and see if people are tilting a little bit too hard and you might just get yourself a value in a trade. Yeah. And I definitely think you are right that people will pull the trigger on that just with the name value, the hype value, so to speak, that CD is going to give you. With Michael Gallup, is he a guy that you know, you're looking to move on from? Is he a guy that's just going to be a flex that sometime is going to end up on your bench and you plug him in when you need that boom upside? He was already more of a boom bust guy when he fished as a low-end wide receiver too in 2019. And now we're seeing him be even more boom bust less than 10 fantasy points on two weeks. Then he has that boom 25 point game in week three. And then now uh, back to another disappointing outing in this one only had two receptions for 29 yards on five targets. So he's being relegated to that pure deep threat, that pure field stretcher. He's on the field more often than the other guys, um, you know, being out there as a blocker, being out there as a field stretcher, just to move the defense around. Is Michael Gallup a guy that we can trust anymore at all? No, but you're probably just keeping him on your bench. I mean, if you trade Michael Gallup right now, you're not going to get anything. I think he's still got enough upside to prevent you from cutting him at this point. And we talked about it with these other guys. The Cowboys offense could pop off at any time. But Michael Gallup is probably one of those guys you just got to stash on your bench. And he might find your flex occasionally if you have bye weeks or you have players that are getting hurt and you need a plug-in guy. Um, you know, not someone you necessarily want to be starting every single week because he is – so boom bust, but you're, you're not going to get anything for him. So you might as well keep him on your bench, you know, keep him as your wide receiver four. And if you have to plug him in, you just got to cross your fingers and pray that it's one of those big weeks um, because we've seen it. He definitely has the capability to make that happen. Um, but, you know, if Michael Gallup's sitting on waivers in a league, if someone's really fed up and they cut him, I'm willing to pick him up um, and just toss him on my bench. And if I get in the pinch, I can throw him out there and hope it's, it's one of the booms. So He's disappointed. I think he's a true wide receiver three at this point who's going to be boom bust. Um, but I'm not getting crazy and I'm not cutting him. I'd still take him over T.Y. Hilton. I'd take him over A.J. Green, guys like that.